In this short video, we're going to take a look at the reaction monitoring module for the SpinSolve software to be used with the hardware reaction monitoring setup. You can find the software module in the main menu under the RMX button. You can select from three different modes for controlling the pump, the continuous stop flow or bi-directional stop flow. And then you can select from pre-recorded templates or create your own template from scratch. In this area here, you can recall details about the particular reaction you're running, the solvent you're running the reaction in, and any other custom information you want to record. In the bottom of the left-hand part of the screen is the reaction monitoring loop. This is the loop where the protocols are run. We can add a new protocol like a fluorine, or we can remove a protocol that we don't want to run. And we can adjust parameters such as the uh, time between the protocols and the number of times we want to go around in the loop. And once we've got it the way we want it, we can save it as a preset and that preset will be available to us again in the future. Now these parameters can all be changed once we've started, so, um, so we have a lot of flexibility. Now when we're ready, we click Start. In the bottom left, the in graphical interface is highlighted to show what particular action is running at the moment, whether it's controlling the pumps or acquiring data with one of the protocols. The protocol that's being acquired is shown at the top of the screen and the data is accumulated in this region at the bottom right where we start to see the series of experiments one after the other. The second protocol we're running here is the fluorine. You can see it now in the acquisition window at the top and the data will be added to a second tab with the fluorine data accumulated in there. By clicking on the button here, we can go to see the fluorine data and zoom in and take a look. Notice we have a strong starting material peak on the right and this little peak on the left, which is the product that's getting formed in this reaction. We can view the data in a number of different modes. There's a stack mode. Uh, we can look at individual spectra or we can see the spectra superimposed on each other. And as you see, this second fluorine acquisition is being acquired. We'll see how the spectra are stacked one on top of the other. And you might notice that the left-hand peak is increasing in size. We move back to the proton uh, acquisitions now. We can see the stack plot accumulating there. The next thing we might want to do is to select some regions and do some integrals. So I'm going to integrate this region here and then I'm going to set up a second integral on the left here, which is where I think my product is being formed. Now, once we've set those integrals, you'll see a new graph appears on the right, which is showing those integrals and how they're changing with each particular scan. You'll notice that one of the points is highlighted uh, a bit stronger, and that shows you the highlighted spectrum in green in the stack plot. Now let's jump to the fluorine uh, data and we can do the same thing again. Set up some integral regions, uh, one for the area on the right and one for the area on the left. And you can see on the right hand side we do have uh, the peak, uh, the red region, integral region is slowly decreasing and the green region is increasing. At any point we have the option to click this button here to save a CSV file of the different integral values uh, over time. And that file could be opened in Excel if you wanted to analyze those, uh, the data with a different program as you're running. As the protocol is running, we might want to change some parameters. So here we're adjusting the number of loops from 50 up to 100. We can also adjust the acquisition parameters of the protocol. So we could, for instance, change the number of scans we wanted on a particular protocol uh, if we needed more signal averaging. We could also change the delays between the different protocols. And here we can adjust how often 
a particular protocol is run. Every second loop, every third loop, if we found we were acquiring too much data. In the top right, there's a timeline window where we can record notes. So for instance here, I can record that I've increased the number of loops to 100 or any changes to the reaction. If I added a, another material to the reaction, that could be recorded in the timeline as well. The system itself also records any parameter changes to the timeline. And you'll notice on the integral plot, it puts a vertical line wherever there's a particular event in the timeline. So you can see where in the progress the changes were made. Now, as the reaction progresses, we may want to edit the integrals. We can here attach a label to the integral. If we think, for instance, this integral is the alcohol in our reaction. And uh, this is the ester product that's being formed. We can record those there. And now you'll see those notes are made in the, uh, in the legend of the integral plot. Let me show you the different display modes for the accumulated data. The superimpose mode superimposes all the spectra on top of each other. The last mode shows the last acquired spectrum, so you can keep monitoring the current spectrum. And the single mode allows you to select any individual spectrum so that you can uh, zoom in and, and, and look at it in more detail, either a spectrum from the beginning of the reaction or towards the end of the reaction. Now, if we jump forward in time a little bit, we notice the reaction has started to slow down and I can adjust the duration of the loop so that it will now only run once every 60 seconds. I can make a note that I did this, but remember the system will also record any changes to the parameters into the timeline. So now the reaction isn't changing as fast. I don't need to acquire my spectra quite as often as I did before. Another useful feature we mentioned before was the ability to acquire spectra only one in every two loops or one in every three loops. So here I've adjusted the fluorine protocol. So I'm reducing the number of times we're running the fluorine experiment. And as my reaction is slowing down, I may have some good reasons to do that. It's not only experiment parameters we can vary. We can also change our data analysis as the reaction is, is running. If I take a look at my proton spectra in more detail, I notice there's a peak there that I want to integrate separately. So I can modify the integral regions that I set originally. So I'm going to reduce it down to just this one peak on the left. And I want to try and integrate this little peak I can see to the right of it. That's that blue integral there. Now it's very small, so it's useful to put that integral onto a separate plot like this. And now I can see it looks like I have an intermediate product being formed, which is building up and then dying down as the reaction is completed. In fact, there's another peak on the right there that I can also put onto that second plot, which seems to be part of that same intermediate product that I'm observing. Let's see if we can observe the same intermediate product being formed in the fluorine spectrum. So I select an individual spectrum from my data set, um, looking at the last mode. I'm going to adjust the product integral, that green region, to a smaller area. And now there's that single peak to the right that I'm going to integrate separately. I'll move that onto a separate graph so it can scale it appropriately. And now it looks like I have the same intermediate product formation in my fluorine and in my proton spectra. You'll notice those small peaks appear to have a baseline on them from the neighboring larger peaks. And there's a useful feature here called bias slope, which will allow us to remove any offset from large neighboring peaks in a very nice, easy way. If I come and zoom into a uh, individual spectrum, you can see the red line that shows uh, how it's applying that correction to the spectrum. Now we've been about 80 times around this loop and it really looks as though my reaction is finished. I don't seem to be producing uh, much more product. And so I can set the number of loops uh, to 80 and this will actually make this particular loop uh, the last loop. Um, 
Of course, I've got the option to click stop as, as well if I want any time. But just to show you here how the reaction protocol will come to an end and you see it exits from the loop and it's now finished. You see this blue button, the reset button tells you it's over. However, I can continue to analyze the data. I continue to uh, look at my spectra. I could apply new integrals if I wanted to, uh, take a look at the, um, at the fluorine data. And I've got the ability to output the data in different ways. There was the CSV file, but there's also a PDF report that can be generated showing you all the acquisition parameters, stack plots, integral graphs, along with the, the notes showing you when different events occurred during the reaction. And that's available both for the proton data and also for the fluorine data. Remember, we didn't have quite as many scans of fluorine because we changed the uh, how often we wanted to acquire at the end there. Then you can see the, uh, the data at the end on the integral plot is getting more spaced out because we changed that um, how often we're acquiring data. As well as the PDF report, each 1D spectrum is saved separately and available for analysis later. If you want any further information about the SpinSolve reaction monitoring software module, please contact us at sales at magritech.com.